Hey, I'm Johnny Palmer, the Wally Weir Guy, and this is the next instalment of my journey learning about what happens with our sewage networks and where all the rain goes and how it ends up in our rivers. Today, I'm down at one of Wessex Water's water plants and I've got someone giving me a tour today. So can you tell us about yourself and what we're here for today? Yeah, hi Johnny, I'm George Taylor. So I look after our sewer network for Wessex Water. Uh, so we basically look after the day-to-day -day running of the sewer network make sure it's doing what it should be doing, dealing with blockages every day, uh, maybe flooding or even discharges to watercourses, um, things like that. So yeah, anything to do with the sewer network, we deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. So do you like get a call and have to deal with it or is it more of like a scheduled maintenance thing? A bit of both. Um, so the calls generally, most of our calls come into our contact center, which is here in Bath. Um, and then we respond to those depending on what the problem is. We'll respond to given time, whatever that is. Um, we do our plan maintenance though, uh, so quite a bit of our time and the stuff we're going to have a look at today is plan maintenance um, and it's typically what we do just to keep things moving, make sure things are doing what they should be doing. Yeah. Well, what's going on here? What's this? Is this your cleaning gear? So this is, yeah, this is the one end. Alright, wow. So what are we looking at and what are you doing here? So we're doing a clean of the siphon that runs under the river. Uh, siphons are quite a critical part of the network, so we want to make sure it keeps flowing. Uh, so the clean is a planned thing that we do every so often just to make sure that it's clear and that it'll keep running. This will go on for a few days, uh, so I think they've been here most of the week and it will carry on into next week as well. So a fair bit of work to do, but, but as I say, it just keeps it clear, keeps it doing what it should be doing. So is this a sewer or is this a rainwater pipe or both? So this is both. So, so Bath is a combined system actually, so you will have both rainwater and foul sewage in this system. Um, so yeah, so this will do both of those things. Okay, so all the rainwater and all the sewage goes in one pipe and it moves from one side of the river to the other by going under the river, is that Correct. right? Correct, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And that gets filled up and now you're going to essentially pressure wash this like you might do your drain at home. Exactly. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. And how often do you have to do this? Well, it will vary depending on the location. I mean, this one we will be doing every couple of years. Um, sometimes it might be every four or five years. It depends what we find. Uh, so ones like this, in a location like this, we'd want to do more frequently just to make sure it is clear and doing what it should be doing. Okay. And is this all of the rainwater and all the sewage of Bath through this one pipe? No. So there are multiple locations along the Avon here. Um, so yeah, so this is just one of those particular locations. Okay. And if this blocked up, what would happen? Would we get um, rainwater and sewage coming out of that manhole there? It, yeah, it depends. I mean, you've got a number of things, but just upstream we have an overflow. Um, so the first thing that would happen, it would back up and into that overflow and then it would discharge. So this is the opening to the siphon or the end of the siphon. Uh, so this is where entry point is basically for the jetting and, and removing and also the camera unit, which we look down, use to look down and inspect the sewer. So this camera is going to spot whatever is blocking the sewer up? Yeah, well it would go down and typically with a, with a maintenance you will have a look just to make sure you've got your maintenance done properly, you've cleaned it out as, as you want. So I've just learned that to get the rainwater and the sewage from one side of the river to another, they actually have a pipe that goes underneath the river and it works like a giant siphon. Very interesting, but it doesn't have any relation to what goes in the river. In a moment we're going to look at a combined sewage overflow where we do get things flowing directly into the river. So we've seen the siphon and now we're at an actual CSO, that's a combined sewage overflow. This is where the rainwater mixes with the sewage and in emergency incidents can flow directly into the river. So when you hear people talking about CSOs, they can look like this, the kind of thing you'd walk past and not even know it's there. And this is where raw sewage can flow directly into the rivers. So can you talk us through what you're doing here and what we're looking at? So during rainfall events, um, obviously the flows are much higher. We have a storage tank which you can't see which is just behind the wall here so the storage tank would fill um, and whilst once that's got, reached its capacity it comes back and then it goes through the screen and then out into the into into the water cooler. so you do have a tank which i understand is called an attenuator tank is that right that's right yeah yeah, yeah. so that would yeah that would store and try and take off the most or, or uh, certainly the peak of the flows um, and then, yeah, once that's got to its capacity, then it would have to run through the screen and then out into the water cooler. Okay, so you do have some capacity here to deal with a bit of extra rainfall, but yeah. that can then fill and overflow into the river. Correct, yes. Why not have a bigger tank? Yeah, uh, a good question. Um, space is often a constraint, as you can see when you look around. Uh, space can be 
difficult and particularly in areas like this you know in areas like bath uh, trying to find the space is is uh, is always the the tricky bit i mean we've put tanks in under football pitches for example because you've got lots of space a uh, big area that you can use them on um, sometimes you will go deep uh, sometimes we might just actually upsize the sewers so you just have a bigger sewer which can deal with more flow and just store more flow in the sewers as well Okay, so last year there were 3 million hours of uh, sewage overflows in the UK. That's 342 years of direct sewage flow into rivers. There is a solution, tanks, yes. So why can't we do bigger, deeper, more tanks, buy more land, buy up some of this car park and make bigger tanks to hold more of that sewage that flows into our rivers? I think tanks is one solution, definitely. Um, and, and yes, all of those things are right. You can do all of those things to enable that. I think another thing and is, is trying to keep the rain out of the sewers in the first place. Uh, so separation, I um, might have to just watch the traffic, sorry, separation of our sewers um, so, that, so that we don't get it in there in the first place. And that, you know, that goes all the way back to individual properties and things like that. So runoffs from roofs, uh, car parks such as this, you know, things like that. If we can separate out the stormwater and the foul sewage as much as possible, that means you don't need to big, build big storage tanks as well. So there's, a, there's a, a number of different solutions that you can have. Really. So there are solutions to stopping raw sewage flow into rivers. It's not an overnight fix. It's a big thing. Uh, you know, for example, in Thames uh, area on the River Thames, you know, the Tideway Tunnel is a big project uh, to deal with that. So, you know, there, there are solutions there, but it's a long term thing to do that. Definitely. OK, and what's what are you guys doing now, right now? What are you seeing on the roadmap to stopping this in the Wessex water area? So we do, I guess, a number of things. So we identify any any overflows that spill frequently. Uh, we've got what we call a frequently spilling overflow program. Uh, we then look at those individual overflows, what's contributing to that. Are there things we can do in the catchment to reduce what's coming into it? Um, are there things you know, operationally that we can do, upsize pumps or upsize sewers or things like that that we can you know, store more flow in the network? Um, and then ultimately, if it comes to it and then we say, no, actually, there's not much else we can do. We have to look at storage. We have to look at something else that would store that and attenuate that flow. So there's a kind of a sequence of things you do. So, yeah, and we're focused on the worst, you know, the worst performers, if you like, of our, of our overflows to try and deal with them. The other thing, of course, is the receiving water courses, taking that into account, the criticality of that, um, and also the, the actual environmental impact that it is having. So we try and measure that as much as possible as well. So deal with the real environmental impact as well. So, yeah. Okay. So can we open this thing? What is that? What are we looking at? Is that a light? That's just a torch. It's oh, right. deep, deep, deep. <laughs> We have a look inside this thing then. Yeah, yeah. This is a big moment for me because I've been talking about these combined sewage overflows. I've never actually seen one. <laughs> so this is the first time I get to get to see this. It might be. So what are we what are we seeing here? Like so I see a big pipe, I, I see it inside what looks like an underground cavity. What is so what is the pipe? If you come around this side, can you see down that way? So you've got the sewer flowing. Bit. That looks like a sieve of some type. That's the screen. The screen? So you've got the sewer coming along. And sewer we, being the, the pipe thing? Yeah, uh, so that's the screen you've got right below okay. you here. The sewer is uh, just under that wall over there. So if you look, you can see the flow. So the water just there. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's, that's, it. that's, that's it. it. Fine. So oh yeah, I can screen. see it flowing. Yeah, so I can see I can see the water flowing along this way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's right. So so in normal circumstances, that's what it does and it's all fine. Uh, so and it we, flows where? Through the siphon? So this would go on down. So this will end up essentially that middle road where we met this morning. Okay, so that's our sewage, which normal times is going to a water just treatment plant, which are great. I've seen them, they work really well. What else are we seeing? So here you've got a screen. Um, so during uh, storm events, so the levels, when the levels come up, and, and as I say, we use up that storage, it would then pass through this screen, which as you can see is fairly fine screen. Can't remember the size on those. Six mil mil screen so that would be required um, and then so that would take out most of your solids you know your wipes and all of that sort of stuff that you would typically find so what's going into the water course then is is water mm -hmm. uh, so it's taking out most of the solids then as a result of that okay so what we're seeing is the sewage which has got all the wee and the poo and the rainwater going through which gets treated yeah. but when there's more rain or loads and loads of sewage going through that's going to lift up and it's going to flow into the screen thing and that's going to flow directly into rivers correct 
It's interesting this goes by a river though. Surely you could have CSOs which actually flooded off to, for example, reed beds or land that could take it as well. Yeah, and we, we have a few of those actually. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so certainly down, um, not so much around this area, but we've got a few CSOs which run through reed beds um, for that particular reason. Just so that- But so rivers are nice and convenient though, aren't they? Because, you know, chuck it in the river and it's gone, yeah? It, it, yeah, that's the way the system's designed. And it was, uh, you know, whether that's right or not, but that's, that's, that's where we are. So where are we now? So we're Brislington, near to Bristol. Um, so again, near to the Avon. Uh, so we'll be here with our stream clean team. Uh, we look at surface water outfalls uh, and, and what we call misconnections, which is basically um, connections that have gone into a surface water drain that are incorrect. Uh, so it could be, you know, toilets into a surface water. It could, it could be anything really that shouldn't be there. That surface water clues in the title. It should just be surface water going into there. So. So we go to the outfall, we'll look at what's coming out and if there's something that doesn't look good or doesn't look right, we'll then investigate and that's what the guys do, follow that back, investigate where that's coming from and then we'll talk with the customers or whoever um, about what we need to do to remove that then. So the what kind water. of things are you looking for in this outfall? It could, it could be anything, to be honest, anything unusual. So typically in dry weather, you wouldn't expect to see anything. Uh, you know, a lot of them would just dry up. Some, you will st still see some water coming through. That might be surface, uh, just groundwater or something. But if it's discolored, uh, and it could be all sorts of contribution, things that are contributing to that. Um, and do you analyze that to find out what it might be? How do you find out what it is and where it comes from? Yeah, well, so we'd follow it back up and the guys would follow back the line of the surface water line. Um, so we'd go to the manholes, they might take samples, they might, um, look, it might be obvious from smell what it is. It's a various different things, depends on the circumstances really, and what you find. But it's all about just trying to trace it back where it's actually going to and then investigating the particular pre premises that it's coming from. So this is one of the other parts of the story. This is a surface water outfall. So all the water that falls on car parks, on roofs, goes down drain pipes, ends up in the rainwater runoff system. And this is where it goes from the pipework system into our ecosystem. So just down there is a the River Avon. That's the water that I personally swim in, my children play in. And it comes from a pipe just like this. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because this is a water that falls from the sky, hits the ground and washes off. However, it could be that people are putting things down their drains, uh, their gutters that is, things like oils or fats or chemicals and it's going to run directly into our river. So this idea of misconnections, this is where people get their sewage and apply it to the rainwater pipes, it seems to be something that happens quite a lot. And it comes from a place of ignorance or it might be total negligence that people don't understand the difference between stormwater and sewage. Now from what I've just heard, People who do that will get a bit of a finger wag from the water company or the environment agency might issue a notice to them to stop pour pouring their raw sewage into the rainfall systems. So this sounds like this is the same issue we've seen a lot, which is the cultural issue around people not understanding how their sewers work. And if we can get people more educated, they'll know where they're connecting things and we might be able to reduce the amount of raw sewage flowing into rivers.